Hi, thank you. Um, earlier today, we heard about climate change and the disastrous effects that climate change can have on our physical environment, including increases in frequency and severity of disaster events, but also consider what climate change has on our wildlife. It changes the habitat structure that they've evolved over thousands of years to coexist with, which is leading to declines in our biodiversity and wildlife populations. Additionally, climate change is affecting our regulatory environment. We're frequently seeing changes in laws, regulations, policies to adapt to either be proactive or reactive to the effects that climate change has. Which brings me to my topic today, the monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly is a spectacular creature. It's small, delicate, fragile, but it goes on this amazing 3,000 mile journey from southern Canada to central Mexico every year in this phenomenal migration that happens um, in a one-of-a-kind matter that really is uncomparable to other invertebrate species. However, the monarch butterfly has declined by 80% in the past two decades, and largely the threats to this species are human-induced impacts, changes to their foraging, breeding, and overwintering habitat. But these are exasperated by climate change. You may have heard that monarch butterflies are in the news a lot lately. Monarch butterflies were recently classified as endangered on the IUCN Red List, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service found in 2020, with the conclusion of their species status assessment, that the monarch butterfly warrants listing under the Endangered Species Act, but is currently precluded by other higher priority actions. However, they've made strong commitment to take urgent conservation action to protect this species. So what does that mean for us? Well, an Endangered Species Act listing poses high risk to our clients. With a new listing, our projects are then impacted and we have to go back and reevaluate impacts to the species from construction and operational activities. So we need to go back out and do habitat assessments for our projects and see whether the species is likely, likely to occur there. From there, we need to do coordination and consultation with state and federal agencies which then may lead to additional actions that are required as part of the project. This could be actions to avoid or minimize impacts or to mitigate those impacts. Who would a monarch butterfly listing affect? Well, practically any land disturbing activity could affect a monarch butterfly. So activities like our ecosystem restoration services, um, our transportation clients, our renewable energy clients, and our uh, energy transmission clients could all be affected by a monarch butterfly listing. Which brings me to my case study today. One of our clients, the Florida Department of Transportation, was interested in evaluating where monarch butterfly habitat occurs along their system ahead of a potential listing under the Endangered Species Act to better understand the risk to their business and to also inform potential conservation actions in the future. And to do this, we use remote sensing. We had two objectives for our project with the Florida Department of Transportation. The first one being evaluating the presence and quality of monarch butterfly habitat. We did this following a traditional approach of conducting field work using 60 random samples um, to detect wildflower areas as a proxy for monarch butterfly habitat. Our second objective was an innovative approach um, used to quantify where monarch butterfly habitat occurs along their rights of way system. We used remote sensing across a 150 square mile area as a pilot project to detect what the acreage of monarch butterfly habitat is across this vast system. So here's our area of interest. North Florida in the southern United States. The area comprises approximately 24,000 acre area and this is where our 60 random field locations fell. From east to west, there's probably 350 miles between these um, furthest points, and each sample point was only 1,500 square feet, or a small rectangle of 10 feet by 150 feet. And it begs the question, for a 24,000 acre area, how representative are these 60 sample plots? Challenges associated with doing monarch butterfly habitat sampling um, really comes down to timing. The timing of the peak wildflower bloom 
in uh, spring in Florida is a very narrow window. It's about a four week window from late April to mid May. And it's very variable. It's dependent on temperature, precipitation, but it's also subject to asset maintenance activities like mowing who may go out and mow down wildflowers. Honestly, our field work felt a lot like trying to find a needle in a haystack. We do our random samples where we physically grab our information out of the haystack, we'll sift through it, and we'll see if we find that needle. It's possible that our sample wasn't representative, so maybe the needle was never in that haystack to begin with, or maybe just by human error we missed that data. And that's kind of what we got. So on the left, we had a great example of monarch butterfly habitat in one of our sample plots where we had high density of flowering plants available for nectar resources for the monarch butterfly. But on the right, we didn't find monarch butterfly habitat in those areas. And the reason for that could be a multitude of reasons. It could be that maybe it was simply never there to begin with. Maybe it got mowed down and we didn't have the opportunity to capture it in our data. Or maybe just by the strategy and design of our sampling, the butterfly habitat was on the opposite side of the road and we just landed on the wrong side. So let's think back to our second objective of this project, of using remote sensing to quantify the amount of habitat available, and think back to our haystack analogy. By using remote sensing, we get to capture the whole picture. We get to see the whole data available to us and really understand and take the time to sift through that data, and we can use AI to show us exactly where the needle in the haystack is. So this is what it looked like. We procured satellite imagery, meaning we purchased um, satellite imagery specifically for the purposes of this project. It was 50 centimeter resolution data, and we can see dense patches of wildflower areas, and we entered that into an image-based um, object analysis model where we can to uh, purely delineate those wildflower areas that we're interested in based on the color um, spectral that we're seeing on those images. And over time, we can refine that model and come up with our conclusions of our delineated habitat areas. Now you may be thinking, what are some potential pitfalls to satellite imagery? If you've ever been in the sunshine state, Maybe you've experienced that afternoon thunderstorm that ruined your beach day. Well, thankfully with modern satellite technology, using Dove satellites, we can overcome that problem by having frequent passes over our area of interest in the matter of hours or days to recapture that image, even if by chance clouds are covering that area. For our purposes, we captured our satellite imagery in the time frame of four days where our field sampling took three weeks. So it's the solution we've been looking for. This opportunity led us to, to find a more comprehensive data set. It's cost effective, it's safe, and it's a flexible and repeatable process that we can use in future years. No longer are the days where we're rained out on the roadside trying to scramble to redeploy our field technicians because of a bad thunderstorm in the afternoon. I mentioned it's cost effective. How cost-effective is it? Well, looking, about, looking at the amount of data that we collected, field work we collected 90,000 square feet of data, whereas we got 4.1 billion uh, square feet of data from satellite imagery. Looking at the cost, it's 15 cents per square foot using field technicians to acquire that data and not even comparable, a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a cent for satellite imagery. So overall, this allowed us to provide our client with an informative decision-making tool to better understand the risks associated with a potential listing under the Endangered Species Act for monarch butterflies, and hopefully better inform their stewardship practices that, that they can provide a conservation benefit to the species going forward. I wanna leave you with this question of how remote sensing can solve your challenges, and hopefully from our topics this morning and Later on throughout today, you'll have answers to your question. I want to acknowledge our great team that's worked on this project. Our Stantec team alone has been across Eastern North America. And special thanks to our client, the Florida Department of Transportation, for the opportunity to work on this project. And I'll take any questions.